Hi everyone, I have just finished The Proposal by Mary Balog. It is the first book on the Survivors Club series, and it was a very interesting read. Uh, the Survivors Club is what the protagonists of these novels call their little group of trauma survivors. Uh, they meet once a year to uh, nurture their souls, so to speak, and to catch up with one another. Uh, this will be a fascinating theme throughout the entire series, and in my opinion is what makes this one of the most uh, rewarding yet uh, painful series to get through. Uh, and without further ado, let me get into some of the spoilers ahead. The story follows Gwen and Hugo. Hugo is a member of the Survivors Club who has decided that it is time to fulfill his duty to his sister and find himself a wife. On a walk to the beach, he finds Gwen, who has just been injured and cannot move. He brings her home to the club in Pandera's Hall, and she's welcomed by all. As the story progresses, they fall in love with one another and marry, as these stories usually go. There were a few interesting ideas that caught my attention. Uh, this is the first story of a main protagonist who was very forward in his physical appetites, and I mean bluntly so. Gwen responds to it with a kind understanding, but not with a permissive and indulgent one. That was a rather interesting strategy. I do believe that it was done on purpose, to display the contrast in their backgrounds. She was a proper lady and he was a brood of war who had achieved a title after a forlorn hope. It was also a great way to show or to illustrate our true nature. There is a difference between showing ourselves vulnerably as we are and stubbornly refusing to see the wrongs in our ways, I think. There is a difference between saying this is who I am and where I come from and demanding others' acceptance or flaws of character because, well, this is simply who I am, deal with it. And the story navigates some of this rather nicely, I thought. Both Gwen and Hugo sought to bring one another into their worlds, although I do suspect that Hugo had to do most of the work, as Gwen seemed more integrated overall and more accepting. There was a lovely quote that was very touching. It went something like, Youthful dreams are precious things. They are not be dashed as youthful and unrealistic just because they are young dreams. Innocence are not to be destroyed from any callous conviction that any sort of cynicism is better. This was spoken by Hugo as he started to show his vulnerable side to Gwen, as he started to confess to her that he had killed hundreds and had been honored for that, but that he also was never a child to harm any creature, and until this day, he was the one to take the spiders out of the yard instead of killing them. Innocence is probably underrated. Or rather, what he calls the cynicism that looks down upon innocence in young dreams is overrated. In the world of today, that innocence has gone too quick, and quicker by the day. And once it's gone, it doesn't come back. I personally feel today that I wish I had lived with my innocence for a bit longer on certain topics. And most of us instinctively seek to protect the innocence of our younger family members and people around us. I think there is a moment for initiations, so to speak, and for delivering knowledge to children. And when done too late, it has repercussions. A man-child, for instance. And when it's done too early, it has repercussions, like trauma. This dispensation of knowledge needs to be navigated very carefully. The Survivor's Club, being what it is, deals with trauma, in most stories. Gwen herself had a rough story. It illustrated guilt in a lovely manner that wouldn't change until Hugo came along. When her ex-husband died in front of her, the last words uttered from his mouth were her name. Ever since then, her name to her was cursed, loaded with guilt and shame and regret. It wasn't until Hugo started using her name and shared his burdens with her that she started to change her own view of herself. And that was powerful. So when she felt responsible for commits suicide and burdens her with a curse of sorts, her name would be forever tainted by the guilt not only reminding her of it, but it buried itself so deeply that whenever someone got close enough to her so as to not need to use her title, but use her name instead, she would be reminded of it. It's also a good way to describe guilt, how it weighs heavily on our identities, a curse that changes the way we know ourselves. If the mere sound of our names is enough to define our lives by the standards of a single moment, we'll forever carry that curse. In terms of ending one's life, they talked about it as it being a selfish act. You leave everyone else with the hurt for the satisfaction of having the last word. It's unkind and selfish, self-centered. And in terms of being self-centered, they explored several aspects, especially from Hugo's point of view. He was constantly apologizing to Gwen for his middle-class world until she stops him. They also discussed demons, fighting them. 
and the sympathy that it creates to share one's burdens with someone else. Gwen hadn't told anyone about her marriage to her ex-husband, how difficult it had been, how taxing on her soul, and Hugo, knowing the value of networking, offered her the advice that she ought to share it with someone. It was a very nice story indeed, and a lot of concepts were explored, and the humor from the rough Hugo and the proper Gwen was actually endearing. The impropriety of their initial interaction could have been a stumping block, but it could also have been an honest way into each other's heart. It wasn't the impropriety that defined their relationship. It was what they had to offer to one another beyond it. Their honest self, their own burden and trauma, their nightmares and their hopes for the future. By sharing honestly with one another, despite the impropriety, they were able to see one another as they truly were broken and struggling, but willing to live on, willing to live beyond their demons and circumstance. This is actually illustrated in Hugo's enjoyment of being in his land. He had seen so much death that he sought to nurture life in any way possible, with animals and plants, to participate in the exercise of life, despite death. It reminded me of a song in Spanish that goes something like, death never defeated us, because whatsoever dies is because it was born and lived at one point. I thank you guys for watching that. If you liked it, make sure to click like and subscribe. And you can share this with your friends. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.